Aki. Banana Hive Mind. All right, Hive Mind. Welcome back. I'm playing more Project Cars 2 again. I'm trying to get back into the sim racing. It's been a couple of weeks since I've been able to play. And I am starting myself from the back of the grid. And so don't expect anything crazy. I'm a little bit out of practice, so I'm going to have to knock a little rust off. But today's video does have a topic. And, uh... Our channel has been getting a lot more impressions lately, and so if you've never seen our channel before and just happen upon this video, first of all, welcome. Welcome to the hive mind. And uh, if you're not interested in the topic, that's fine. You know, you can just mute me and watch the video or whatever you want, or if you are interested in the topic, I'd love for you all to hear it. But uh, today's topic is kind of, kind of, oh outside of the lines there a little bit. Go right to the straight. Today's topic is kind of interesting. It's a uh, workplace trauma. I'll try and get on behind this Bentley and get into a slipstream if I can figure it out. So I'm gonna try and tell this story without going into too much detail and doxing myself. But ooh 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 just a little bump. Just a little love tap, just give you a little bump draft. But, uh... So, a few days ago at work, I had, I guess, what could be called a, uh, a pretty traumatic incident. And I won't get into what I do, or what exactly the incident was, but, uh... Uh, I'll, I'll give some details to give some backstory. So I was in a situation, which is a uh... oh 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 locking up, locking up, locking up. And that Bentley's gonna take his place back. I was in an incident, which was a, uh... I mean, no exaggeration at all. It was a life and death situation. Um. And I was alone in that situation for five or six minutes, which doesn't sound like a long time, but it, it felt like an eternity. Um, and after that incident, my coworkers, you know, they were all coming up to me asking, hey man, are you okay? Is there anything I could do for you? And I was very thankful for that. And, uh, you know, my co-workers did an amazing job. I was very happy that they were there. Um, but my supervisor just... I got nothing from her. You know, she wouldn't say a word to me. No, uh... No, are you okay? No, nothing. And to say that... Oh, just right into the gravel, trying to pick up some speed. And... To say that I was a little upset by that might be a bit of an understatement. So, you know, we get all, we get everything in order, we get the whole situation taken care of and under control. And, uh, we get done and I'm in my supervisor's office talking with her. Oh my god, oh my god. Oh, right into the barrier. Well, I guess we're gonna be doing the rest of this from the back of the grid. That's okay, that means no pressure. Got nothing but to improve. Again, I said I'm really out of practice. I haven't played in a couple of weeks, so cut me some slack. And if there are any new people here that are watching the channel for the first time and they're into sim racing, and you see mistakes that I've made or things that I can improve, I'd really appreciate a comment and let me know. Uh, you got any advice or any anything that I could do to be better? But anyway, back to the story. Um, we, uh, you know, the whole situation gets calmed, 
and uh, I'm in the supervisor's office talking with him, and she still hasn't said shit to me. Well, finally, after it's been an hour and a half, two hours at this point, she can kind of tell that I'm having a rough time. I was a little fucked up about everything that had happened. Um, and I'm, I wouldn't consider myself a very emotional guy, but this was a, it was a pretty crazy situation. And so, uh, finally she asked me, are you good? And I'm like, I'm fine, I guess. You know, I'm, I'm not, but I, I was honestly just pissed off at the time that she hadn't said a word to me yet. Um, and so... She asked me, so, are you working tonight? And I was supposed to. And I told her this, word for word. I was just like, could I fucking not? I said, you could put me down for sick time or personal or vacation or whatever you gotta do, but could I just, like, have a day? She said, without even thinking about it, just immediately, sorry, can't do it. And to say that I was frustrated would be an incredible understatement. Um, in fact, I don't think I would be exaggerating in saying I was some of the most mad I've been in my entire life. I felt... I felt like, first of all, she didn't care that I had just gone through something pretty traumatic. I felt like she was understating everything that I had gone through. I, I felt betrayed, I felt hurt. Um, you know, I wouldn't say that all of my supervisors are the best supervisors in the world, but at the, before that, I would have liked to have think that when push comes to shove and something crazy happens, they would have, uh, they would have had my back and helped me whenever, whenever necessary. And uh, I, I quickly learned in that situation that that wasn't the case. And, uh, so I storm out of the, I storm out of the supervisor's office, don't say a word to her. But it's clear that I'm not an incredibly satisfied person in the moment. And so I leave, I go home, and I'm supposed to go to work that night. And, you know, just to be clear, I work 12-hour shifts, and so it's not like... Oh, you know, just do a little eight-hour shift, six-hour shift, whatever. Have a cup of coffee, try and keep to myself and go home. No, it's a long night. And I did not anticipate that I would be sleeping very much. And so I get home. I was just happy to see my fiancé. She was just happy that I was okay. And I'm laying there with her, and I'm, I am just fuming. And, uh... Normally I would be going to the gym at that time, but I got off work late because of the situation, and then... Oh, okay, I could have carried a lot more speed through there. I need to become more familiar with the tracks that I'm racing at. Well... Okay, okay, not in the tires, not in the tires. So I get home, I'm laying down with her, she's just happy I'm okay. I'd normally be going to the gym at that time, but I didn't because I thought, you know, I had to go to bed and fucking go to work. And I'm just fuming. And I hop out of bed real quick, say, you know what? Fuck him. I'm just going to call in sick tonight. Um, and so that's what I did. I called in sick. I got out of bed. I threw my gym clothes on and I went to the gym because I had to go... You know, I, I, I needed to go blow off a little steam. And, uh, that definitely helped a lot, and, uh, I spent the rest of the day, you know, calling some close friends and mentors and people who have been doing the job that I do a lot longer than me, and just kind of getting some advice and feedback and all that kind of stuff, and trying to figure out, after I had calmed down, if I was out of line. You know, was I out of line, or was my supervisor the one that was out of line? And the feedback I got from everybody was, No, dude, you're... You're 100% right in this situation. Um, she... You know, she, she really should have been supporting you, and she wasn't. 
And, you know, I, I was sure to get some opinions from even some people I, I didn't know that well, but it had experience in the sort of situation that I was in. And I, I prefaced it with saying I just wanted their unadulterated opinion. And, you know, everybody's pretty much given me the same feedback, like, no, dude, you're good. You were in a traumatic situation. You should have been given, at the very least, just a single day to, uh, you know, to get your head right before coming back to work. And so, uh, that's the general consensus that everybody gave me. And so I feel like I'm in the right. Well, I'm not here just to tell a story. I'd like to say that, uh, I'm not the most emotional guy in the world. And I'm the kind of guy that typically, especially when it comes to work stuff, just lets things roll off my back. Because I, I'm not really one of these people that's like, oh, my work is my life, and it's everything, and all that kind of stuff. Um, uh, I, I'm kind of one of those people that, uh, you know, I, I'm going to work to pay my bills and feed my family. And so, yes, work is important in that, in that way. But, uh... Um, pretty much what I'm trying to say is, when it comes to mental health and work, if you're in a traumatic incident or you're, you're very stressed about your work or whatever the case may be, you, you need to take care of yourself. And I'm not trying to downplay work or say it's not important or whatever. Obviously paying the bills and feeding yourself and your family is important. But there comes a time, and this was that time for me, where even if you're the kind of guy like me who just lets things roll off his back, you, uh, you need to stand up for yourself. And, you know, you need to let them know that, yes, I work here, yes, y'all pay me, but I'm, I'm a person. You know, I, I have feelings and I have emotions and I'm, I'm not just a number on your roster of employees or whatever. Um... And, you know, I'm not saying do this for little tiny nothing incidences, but I was in a, you know, it was a real incident. It was a serious thing. And if you have a situation like that and your supervision is just completely unsupportive, uh, y you need to stand up for yourself, especially if you need time to... Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. And on the last lap. Oh, wonderful. Um... If you need time to cope with what happened or whatever, and they're just pretty much saying, go fuck yourself, you're coming to work. Um, you need to stand up for yourself, because that's just not okay. And if they want you to get in trouble for that, well, you know, there's, there's remedies to that. You need to go talk to your HR department or whatever you have at whatever job you do or what have you because if you're if you're in a traumatic incident then I involved with your work then they owe you time i mean it's the it's the very least that they owe you honestly and uh just just stand up for yourself you know a job is important it's of course important to pay your bills and feed your family but uh your mental health is very important, too. And so definitely keep that in mind. And just remember, a company or a whatever kind of job you have, a government job or whatever, their employees are their biggest assets, which means you are their biggest asset. And uh, they, they got to take care of their assets. And so... That's just kind of some of the stuff I wanted to talk about today. It was kind of just weighing heavy on my mind, and I sort of wanted to talk it out a little bit with one of the shittiest races I've had in a long time. Across the line. In the Porsche. But uh, it, it's just kind of something I wanted to talk about. If it's a topic y'all are interested in and you want to hear it, that's great. You're welcome to listen. And again, if you're just kind of someone who's, uh, who's into sim racing and uh, you rolled across our channel, 
you don't want to listen to me talk and talk and talk and you just want to watch some dog shit racing, then you're welcome to. And again, if you are new to the channel and you've seen the many, many mistakes that I've made or things that I can improve, I'd really appreciate the advice on what I could do better. So I appreciate you guys and really hope you give the video a like, whatever you're going to do. But uh, thanks for watching the video and stand up for yourself. Tennis, no splinter.